we do have free will because we can make uncoerced choices. But even our free will choices are ordained to be free. With God's knowledge, he happens to know everything. It's like God going, well, I can't help it. I know everything. I know what choices you're going to make because ultimately I've ordained that they make them, that you make them. Because if he's going to create the universe with you in it, he's not going to create things where he goes like this with a dice. Let's see what's going to happen, what's going to happen, and he throws it. Oh, that's what's going to happen. It's impossible. John, 1 John 3.20, he knows all things. And Ephesians 1.11, he works all things after the counsel of his will. If that's the case, that even our free will choices are ordained to occur. Can't get around that logically. But they're still free because we freely make them. But they're ordained that they're free. And they're ordained to occur. Okay, seriously? So you have these events being preordained, predestined, foreknown, in other words, intended by the God in question, right? But then how um, are we still responsible? That's the question that's being asked. And um, some Calvinists are actually honest about this, and they'll say, we don't actually have free will. And that makes it, I guess, at least coherent. But um, some of you might remember the um, recent Saiten Brugengate debate where he He's telling people in the Q&A afterwards, no, he doesn't believe in free will. So at least that kind of makes sense. But to say that everything is uh, predestined and then you're still accountable for everything doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So. We both agree that to that. A world without unnecessary suffering is better than that with... For who? Unnecessary. Better for who? For the people who live in that world, for us. Okay, I would agree there. But okay. we're not the standard of righteousness. God is. He says in Isaiah 43, 7, he makes us for his glory. So, so it, it's better for God's glory that some of us suffer? So you're claiming your God is glorified by the suffering of innocence? Not my God. The God. Well, and the God yes, you're claiming glorified. exists. The, right. The, the God that exists, the God of Scripture. He is glorified in all things. Okay, remember that part. That's important. He's glorified in all things. So whether it be good or evil, no matter what happens, he's still glorified. That's important, and I'll come back to it. You need to demonstrate what is necessary or not necessary for God, for his glory. You need to demonstrate what is necessary not necessary for his glory, as far as suffering goes. What would be necessary or not necessary for his glory if he's glorified by any possible outcome, whether it be good or evil? Why... Is there an element of necessary evil? What's the what's the point? That's never explained. So, if in fact God exists and a baby cancer wait, wait, wait. is to His glory, then yes, that that would be a horrible God. That's your opinion. And as far as this bit about opinion, um, Matt loves this line. Um, if you've seen my video where I talked to Matt last week. He said the same thing. Well, that's just your opinion as some kind of um, counter-argument to what I was saying, which um, something being an opinion isn't evidence that it's wrong. It's, I mean, an opinion might be wrong, but it might be right. It's just, um, so it's not it's not a very good counter-argument for him to be throwing that around all the time. All you're okay. doing, you're not realizing what you're doing. You're just giving us your opinion. So now, I'm not trying I, to disrespect you, you know, and your, you know, and stuff like that, but, but so what, dude? So okay. what? Getting a little rowdy, isn't he? A little rambunctious, a little bit annoyed. I wonder what that's all about. You need to tem to demonstrate for, for us what is right and appropriate for God. That's the whole argument. All right, so who determines what is necessary for God's glory? He does. Headshot. That was awesome. Um, he determines what's necessary for his own glory. He determines what's necessary for his own glory. Then he's going to determine how much evil is going to be necessary in the world. He's in charge of all of this. So um, what FSX is doing is laying it at God's doorstep and saying, look, this is on you. And um, Matt's like, like any apologist is trying to, um, trying to give God an out, trying to pretend as if God can still be a good guy, um, even though he's, he's set up this whole game in such a way that uh, ultimately we lose, or at least many of us lose, and um, lose big. 
I mean lose as in eternal torment in burning flames. That's that's the doctrine that Matt believes in and preaches. So this is a big deal. I mean the um, the outcome is a big deal, and if it's true, it's horrible. And thankfully, you know, people like myself and FSX um, don't believe it's true, but um, Matt believes it's true, and that's what's important here. All right, so he's the one who makes suffering necessary. Would you not prefer, would you not think, if he has the choice of having a world with or without suffering and his glory is not at risk? You're not getting it. He decides what is, for, what is good for his glory. The logical answer is, if what you're saying is true, if God's going to do what's greatest for his glory, then this world exists for the greatness of his glory. It's a logically necessary answer to what you're, you're getting at. It's a tautological answer for what he's getting at. In other words, he's saying um, if, every, if God exists, the Christian God that he believes in, and he does everything for his own glory to maximize his own glory, um, then the way the world is, if this is a world he created, is in such a way as to maximize his own glory. Um, doesn't prove anything. He's just saying, if I'm right, then I'm right. You know, if my God exists and this is a correct definition, then what we have in the universe is necessary because just by definition, it's not very satisfying, but that's what he believes. All right. So he is glorified by the suffering of people. Absolutely. As well as the, the, uh, the health of people and the reward of people. Well, once again, he's glorified by everything. Everything, every possible outcome, whether it be um, a baby with cancer or um, a stillborn or um, you getting the job you want or you getting the relationship you want or you dying tomorrow, it all glorifies God. So, And, and he never really spells out um, what does it mean for God to be glorified. He's alone in his magnificence. He's this omnipotent being unmatched in the universe. What does it mean for him to be glorified? Glorified to whom? To himself? To the other small creatures he's made? He's made creatures like us, but we're minuscule in comparison to him. So why does it matter whether we see him as glorified? He, should be, he shouldn't be so insecure as to need the constant reinforcement of his ego. Is that what's going on, or does the glory mean something else? It's, it's not really ever made clear, but... I, it makes me curious about it. Who are you to say what is unnecessary, necessary suffering? You're just a guy. I can't say it. You can't say it. And especially since you're an atheist, you have no moral view by which you can justify any objective standard that you can appeal to to say it is or is not necessary. Who are you? You're just a guy. How dare you question me? How dare you question these doctrines? How dare you question these ideas? Who do you think you are? If gods don't exist... If there are only humans who are going to have the opportunity to address these issues, then we need to address them. We need to um, root out harmful ideologies. We need to expose them. That's what FSX is trying to do. That's what many of us are trying to do. It's just to expose lies, basically to expose harmful lies. So who are you to do it? Who else? Who else could? Right, and I just find it strange that believers appeal to their morality being so superior to ours, where they worship a God who unnecessarily causes suffering in this world. You haven't established this unnecessary. And you haven't established that it's necessary. You've only established that if God is this certain way that I've defined him, and the universe is such a way as to maximize his glory, then the universe maximizes his glory. You're not describing or explaining why the evil we see maximizes his glory. In fact, you've said that evil as well as good, both are for his glory. So what's the difference? So maybe well, I, I misunderstand. Maybe, no, you miss. You don't get I it. Yeah, maybe I don't get it. So you're, you're saying, so you're, saying su so you're saying suffering is necessary for God's glory. God, if he's going to do what he's going to do, and there's suffering in the world, then suffering exists for his glory. Why does he need suffering for his glory? I don't know. Well, that's probably the most honest thing he said in the whole broadcast. Not that he was lying the whole way through, but um, apologists do what they have to do to um, to get a message across. So, um, you know, I don't know. You know, why why is suffering necessary if God is um, 
if God is glorified by any possible outcome, then what's the point of suffering? Especially this needless, gratuitous suffering that was mentioned in the broadcast. Um, so I thought this was a pretty good, um, pretty good um, delivery of the theodicy, the problem of evil, by uh, FSX. Um, the the inter uh, interchange between uh, Tommy Hall and uh, Matt Slick was actually really interesting. So um, if you're interested in seeing a Calvinist versus a non-Calvinist, um, it was kind of sparring over some of these uh, theological issues. You might enjoy going back and watching that. Um, Tommy's segment starts about halfway in. And um, so that's about it. This was from the uh, Bible Thumping Wingnut um, podcast or um, YouTube um, show. So um, I'll link it in the description and um, I'll probably link the channel for FSX and uh, Tommy Hall so you guys can check out his uh, their stuff if you want. So um, thanks for watching.